Hello everyone, and welcome back to my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I hope to test out a new little system to get some science. But before I do that, I have a few little points to mention. First of all, obviously 0.25 has come out, and my plan is, in that series, in the new stock series I'm doing for 0.25, I'm doing post-commentary mainly, and I'm not going to really focus on reusable rockets like this. I might focus on space planes, we'll see because of the new space plane parts and all of that. Uh, so we'll, we'll see about that. I think uh, it'll be sufficiently differentiated because in that series there's the hard mode, the new difficulty mode, and that's really keeping my budget tight. Here I've got plenty of budget. Uh, I really don't need to make anything reusable to fulfill any contracts. I could just fill the contracts anyway without any reusability whatsoever. But uh, we will continue trying to make reusable systems. I've also got one more treat for you. In the video description, there is a link to a PDF that is the EDB Schematic Compendium. And this, uh, there's a new mod called Chrono Vessel Viewer, and it allows you to export your uh, images of your vessels as uh, JPEGs or PNGs or something like that. A, yeah, any uh, sort of image file, I forget which image files it supports. But anyway, uh, it uh, exports the images of your craft files, and so I've sort of gathered as many as I can. Uh, compatibility is sort of an issue, and it includes uh, crafts from this series as well as five other series that I have. Series, I guess the plural is just series, right? Anyway, uh, five other sequences, or I call them divisions in the actual compendium. Anyway, it's about a 25 megabyte. PDF and uh, it's a Dropbox link in the video description so if you want to take a look at that I will be improving upon it eventually but uh, for now it's a pretty robust thing it's like 90 pages long or about that so uh, some technical details not just pictures there I, I did uh, list the stages and all of that uh, give as many details as I thought I could given a weekend's worth of work so there you are and now, finally, I get to this little mini science lander. And the goal here is to develop a, a orbital vehicle. You know, so far we've been developing these first stages as single stage to orbit. Uh, this time I want to try and start developing one that is single stage to moon flyby. So it's going to boost the, the payload to a moonar flyby so that the payload doesn't have to do that part on its own. Um, we're probably a little bit short of that with this configuration, we'll see. But uh, just in case, I've, I've put some solar panels along with batteries and the probe core here so that we can uh, figure that, uh, so that we can bring it back and make sure it doesn't lose electric charge along the way because it's got to be out there for a lot longer than if it was just in Kerbin orbit. Um, this is a skipper, of course, and so that's all we'll, we'll be using. The payload is 1.5 tons, or is it 1.8? I think it was 1.5. Anyway, so uh, that is the plan. We've got, and the reason we are trying to do this now is because we've got the seismometer and the gravioli and all that stuff. Um, it would be easier if we were headed for Minmus, but we'll, we'll be trying it for, with the moon, so that should be more interesting. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's take this out and see how it works. Okay, so here we go. Throttle up, SAS on. And all systems to go. Let's launch. You can see a very uh, tight thrust to weight ratio. I mean, I don't think I could have loaded any more fuel onto this. And obviously, I preferred using these tanks on the side as opposed to something inline because that gave us a wider base for the landing struts, which are the heaviest landing struts, the heaviest default landing struts right now. So, yeah. I could have used the mainsail, of course, and built a bigger rocket, but I was trying to keep it with the skipper, so we'll see how that works out. Um, thought about adding engines here. Thought about uh, making it a um, docking port system and have this actually uh, go all the way to the moon's orbit and have the lander dock with it and then have it all come back together. That was another plan. All of those are potential plans that I might uh, consider in the future. And uh, it is somewhat in response to somebody, I forget who it was, suggesting single stage to Duna. Now, in terms of efficiency, single stage to Duna landing 
is not particularly efficient if you're going to bring the whole thing down to Duna. However, if you have the lander on a docking port, you could say single stage Duna orbit and have the lander go off and do the landing and come back up again, redock, and then the whole thing comes back together. So basically you'll be sending something out and you'll be bringing it all back together. So that's, uh, that's not a single stage, but it's uh, close and it is preferable. It's uh, much more efficient than trying to land a huge vehicle on the surface of Duna for no apparent reason. Uh, that is somewhat... That's, I mean, uh, good to brag about. Nothing really elegant about it, though. Not a very good design system. So, moon or flyby, though, pretty easy. I mean, as you can see from this uh, first attempt, uh, I don't think, I don't anticipate it going... Uh, really pushing the boundaries of anything in terms of design. It's just a little bit more compared to what we normally do with Kerbin. Now I'm uh, picking an arbitrary course. I could have timed it so that we had a direct ascent to the moon, in which case that would be much more efficient. But I, I, was, I decided to go with an arbitrary launch. So we'll get into orbit first, in other words, instead of just uh, heading directly for the moon. Now obviously for a system like this where it's a single stage to moon or flyby, this is probably the only situation I can think of where you would actually want to launch into a free return trajectory. Otherwise a free return is completely useless in KSB. I mean you're not anticipating any failures unless uh, you uh, for some reason forget to uh, deploy solar panels, in which case how I don't know. I forget. I think you can deploy parachutes even if you don't have electric charge. I forget about that. But um, unless you forget to uh, get your solar panels out or or otherwise you're particularly bad at math, um, there's really no reason. It's uh, We don't have the kinds of uh, failure probabilities that a real mission would have. So there's no reason to bother with uh, free return trajectory unless you know that uh, you've got a stage that is going to be coming back and is not going to be doing anything else in the vicinity of the moon. Okay, so here we go for orbit. It's also very finicky on the on the return side. You can see uh, just one little tick of my mouse wheel makes a difference of about 50 kilometers on the on the Kerbin periapsis but this looks okay yep that looks like a proper one so I'm going to try and conserve about 25 units of liquid fuel in the stage and I I can uh, so use that as a benchmark because I know that the lander has 75 units altogether was it 75? Uh, yes, 75, yes, that's right. Okay, uh, 101 left there. Well, let's, let's push it a little bit more. So I think I'm about 50 units shy if I don't want to expend the stage completely. I suppose we could try, you know, let's, let's just, uh, use a little bit more of this stage, see how close we can get. Nah, well I don't know. It might be a little bit tricky. Yeah, I, I think I'll need to do an adjustment out there, so. Uh, this stage is not going to be going around the moon, so it's not going to be on this trajectory anyway. So I'll halt it there and I'll have to do a burn at apoapsis in order to get it into the atmosphere and retrieve it. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll say goodbye to launch stage for a sec here. And continue this burn with the lander stage. Obviously it doesn't have to do as much work as it would have had to do if it was making this transfer all on its own. 
technically this part doesn't need to be on a free return, but hey. Since we were all plotted for it, we might as well do it. Okay, that'll do. Now, this guy, well, uh, it's a little bit of a trick. This guy, I have to do its part first before the other mission gets to its destination, so I do have to do this next. Okay, so let's adjust this orbit. Get back into the atmosphere. Hello. Be very, very careful because the skipper has a lot of power. Okay, that's good enough. Now, we have to refocus on this one, get into orbit around the moon. Here we go. And this guy has its nice little loop de loop. Practically in orbit already. Okay, and of course if we can land on the moon, we could probably land this thing on two locations on Minmus. At, at least, probably more than that. So we'll probably do that next, because uh, I need science. I need. I, I want to unlock stuff. Lots of stuff. And so I don't want to dawdle about this. But we have to test that this works first. Could have been doing stuff all the way around, I guess. Let's see, log gravity data. We can transmit that. Oh, wow, it takes a lot of electric charge. Yeah, this was sort of an expensive lander because of the instruments. The Gravioli itself is like 8,800, which is ridiculous. And so we definitely want to bring all that back. In fact, I think the lander, well, no, the, the launcher is still more expensive than the lander, but it's a close call. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's orbit. And that should be a decently tight orbit. Okay, and with that safely in orbit, we will switch back to the launcher. Now, here comes the part that is the real test, right? And of course, so we know that we're about 50 meters per second shy of what we really wanted out of this thing. So, got to figure out how to add that in. Could be tricky. Because uh, we already saw on the launch that uh, we were at the limit of the skipper. And it's not like other... Other rockets are quite as efficient. Uh, the skipper uh, has the stats of like the LV T30 and T45 in terms of ISP. So it's the upper bounds for a rocket that's meant to ignite right from the start. So we go away from Kerbin briefly and then we come back towards Kerbin. Haven't really done this kind of return before, and we weren't really all the way at the moon. We're sort of in the middle. Didn't uh, use air braking calculator or anything like that, so we'll have to see. Are we going up? Yeah, we're going up. We have passed periapsis, but our apoapsis is continuing to go down. I'm a little bit worried about this. Yeah, it's going down a little bit too quickly. And we're not going up quite as fast as I'd like. Uh, I've been doing this in 0.25 as well. I really should quit trying to guesstimate my way through the arrow braking. Just uh, look up arrow braking calculator. It's not exactly the... This is not a thing that... Well, it's obviously possible to calculate it, but it's not an easy thing to calculate. Anyway, so obviously I overdid it. But let's see if it survives. That's an important thing. 
Note that I'm going for a vertical landing this time. Uh, the horizontal landing is mainly for the mainsail. Uh, I think the vertical landings should be possible with the skipper still. We tried that out a few times. In any case, uh, having vertical landing does have the benefit that you can run your engine. Unfortunately, the horizontal landing, you can't use your engine to cushion the landing. And parachutes. Put eight parachutes, eight of the radio mount parachutes, and we'll see whether that's enough for this. What's the mass of this? Uh, ele oh, darn. Wow. 11.26 is more than I thought it would be. Okay, uh, I see terrain here. Let's see. Okay, so 800 meters is our current radar altitude, and a little bit more than 800, and we are at 7.2 meters per second. Let's try for a light touchdown here, even though it's clearly a sloping terrain. I don't know how much... I don't even know if it's safe to... Wow, it's really touchy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh? Oh, good timing. Wow. Uh, lost the parachute. So I, I was... Anyway, I don't know if I was actually going to be going up on the skipper or it was the fact that I actually touched down. Okay, well, a uh, successful touchdown. Uh, totally in the wrong location, but let's recover vessel. So that's... Uh, that's reusable, 100% reusable, though we need to get closer to KSC. And, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just need to lighten up on the on the payload a little bit. We'll see how much Delta V it ends up having. All right, let's uh, go back to our moon mission. Oh, uh, I guess we could clean up some stuff first while we're here. Uh, the X3, uh, we had a few parts left over on the... If you remember, there was an extra cockpit, so let's recover that one. Uh, yeah, it's the cockpit and the mod propellant tank, it looks like. Oh, no, that's the mod propellant inside of it. Yeah, very good. Well, don't want to lose that cash. And otherwise... Uh, I, I'm not going to recover anything landed on Duna. Let's just leave that be. All right, let's go back to our mission. So now we need to pick a landing location. We've already done this one. That would be the most obvious. Uh, it looks like some of the craters are on the dark side right now. So it looks like this one is probably the best deal. I don't know if that part counts. I don't know if this trench is something special or not either. I guess technically just landing anywhere will be fine because if that's, that's the only place we've done here. Well, that, that's the only place we've landed and planted a flag, though. Okay, so I'm going to aim for this bit here. It's got to cost a little bit more than usual, but uh, I think this lander has the stuff for it. What is our contract, by the way? Plant a flag on Ike. We need to go to Ike, huh? Okay. Okay, stop spinning. Okay, descent initialization burn complete, and now the main burn. Okay, it looks like we can uh, do a temperature scan. Let me transmit that quickly. Didn't take too much electric charge. I'm not going to try the gravioli here because that does take up all of our electric charge, and that's not a good idea when you're doing your descent. Now here's the question, does this really have enough fuel for the way I land things? Oop. Okay, we are on the surface. Let's do some science, log seismic data. Uh, we're going to keep this stuff. From the surface we're going to keep it. Uh-huh. 
Okay, keep that. And finally, the gravioli data. Keep that. Okay, so we've got all our science. Let's go home. Anything else we need to do? Nope. All right. Ooh, that's a nice way for Kerbin to rise. Of course, it reminds me that I'm at an inclination, though. Just a slight inclination, though. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Orbit has been achieved. And now the return. Though I'm gonna have to fix my inclination, it looks like. Wow, yeah. Hmm. Now where do I do that, I wonder? This is not a good place. Um... That's not a good place. Right there is the place. Looks like it's got cost me an extra hundred or so. Let's see if this thing has it in it. I'm going to keep it to about 36k. No, I'm still not using the overbreaking calculator. Let's try this. Okay, well, we're going to try that altitude. Okay, to Kerbin we go. Not very far from the KSC on this side. Hmm. On a second go around, that could be interesting. Might not have to lift my periapsis. So what I'm thinking is, uh, at this periapsis, it'll bring me down somewhat, and then on a but my orbit will have been reduced to some quicker orbit, and then the KSC will move to about here, and then on a second pass, I'll be slowed down again and end up dropping over there somewhere. That's that's the idea. We'll see. Let's see how how much the first pass drops my orbit. Here we go. So I think this is a pretty nifty little science lander. It doesn't carry the goo containers or the science juniors, but it still carries stuff to do science. And I think it'll be well suited to interplanetary missions uh, with the upscaled launcher, with the mainsail launcher. And the mainsail launcher will be able to get uh, much further, and then we'll have to have some sort of expendable booster that will be able to get it to its destinations. Otherwise, of course, the mainsail will end up in in Kerbal-centric orbit around the Sun, and that wouldn't be good. Okay, looks, uh, looks okay. Yeah. I think I'm not going to adjust my orbit at all. I think uh, we are going to come around at this uh, periapsis for a second pass. Well, that's where I wanted the KSC. I think I'm going to force the issue a little bit.
Okay, let's see how that works out. So Applelabs is above 400 kilometers and dropping. This is, of course, an, not a normal orbital recapture we're talking about here. So tough to guess whether this is going to be enough. And it looks like I'm going to overshoot. Yeah. Uh, undershoot, sorry. So I'm actually going to force myself forward. If it'll let me. It won't let me right now. Okay. Nope, I can't force myself forward. It's really insistent that I'm going to come down right about here. Looks like the mountains are still in front of us, so probably not going to land on top of them. Okay, well, I guess I'll just go with this. Oh, looks like we're actually over water. We actually missed the continent. Oh, that's a shame. 5.2 is not bad, though. Should be able to survive that impact. We're still carrying about one of these tanks worth of fuel. Where is it? Well, it's in this tank right now, so maybe we can ditch one of these. Okay, there we go. Okay, for some reason I forgot to press record while I was talking about uh, I had the little summary window up, but the point, uh, the point is that we got about 200 science and uh, we, uh, the lander ended up at 90%, so a little bit fur further away from the KSBC than I would like, but still not too bad. We got uh, most of our funds back from the mission, though no, not all of it, but we got some decent science as a result. Uh, we have learned that uh, we need 50 meters per second more on the, on the launch stage to get a real single stage to moon or flyby. And perhaps one way of doing that is to ditch uh, one of the toroidal tanks on the lander. Maybe that will have some effect. We'll see. Uh, but I think there's a system that could work out for for a while. And uh, not only to get uh, Moon and Minmus stuff, but once we couple the lander with the mainsail, we could probably send this to Jewel and stuff like that. So we'll see. Uh, let's take a look at what to do with our science. Okay, so taking a look at the tech tree, we don't have too much of a choice. Maybe I should hold on to it. Uh, looks like it could save up. Uh, just 11 more science will get us the nuclear propulsion. Uh, I, I don't see a pressing need for the advanced grabbing unit, the claw. So yeah, I think uh, what we'll do is aim for a reusable tug of some sort using the nu nuclear propulsion. I think that'll be a good addition to our inventory. So uh, I'll save up my science and look into that. So uh, this is going to be a short episode and uh, just one little mission. But uh, we, we got some things done and I think I know where we're going next. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.